Outro cast. Matt, thank you for taking the time. Really big fan of your book. So many things to ask you about the contents of that book. But before I do that, is it an okay day for you, aside from answering the same questions over and over and over again? Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. It's surprisingly warm here. It's like 65 degrees in December in Kansas today. So took the dog for a walk, then talking to you. There you go. Well, I really enjoy the book. I enjoy okay. the open-ended nature of the ending because you go, oh, he's he's got about 15 years he can still write about maybe 20 years that he can write about based on the ending, but you have an excellent recollect or were you taking notes and diarying the whole time? Uh, I used to journal a lot when I was younger, but this was mostly just like recollections of stories. A lot of it was stories that I've told a lot of times, like, you know, I, I like to say like either at a party or backstage or on a drinking beers on a porch <laughs> and I just wanted so I've kind of honed them a little bit some of them some of them I'd never talked about before but uh yeah the the first especially the first couple of years of touring are really burned in my brain because it was all so new and I was so hands-on with everything like booking everything mm -hmm. and driving and, and all that kind of stuff and so it'll be kind of interesting when we get into I've got plans for the next, like, what would you call it? Volume of this, like the next book of like, it gets a little bit murkier when we start touring in a bus and everything kind of becomes the same thing over and over again every day. But when you're first, your first tour in a van, it's all, you know, it's like piracy. It's all just an adventure the whole time. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, what's to come from the volume two, working with Scott Litt on that album, blowing Weezer off the stage every night like I saw at Roseland in New York City, et cetera. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the book. And I loved that the first page of the book, you referenced Pretty Boy Floyd and Electric Angels. No. <laughs> I never knew you as an 80s metal guy, but- Oh I yeah, big time. It's one I of the- I ask with Electric Angels, are you aware- of yes. who was in that band yes i am and it was, <laughs> it was one of those things where people go people go oh you're just saying you like that band because of john the, yeah. john and i was like i didn't even know that was a thing i just really liked that record a lot uh you know i saw the video on headbangers ball and it had christina uh applegate, uh, applegate in it yeah. i said christina ricci and i was like that's not right and uh <laughs> Christina Applegate in it and I was like so I was kind of like oh huh I wonder why she's in the music video and then the song really caught my ear and I went and bought the record and it's just like good like kind of T-Rexy glam stuff and like good hooks and I was just like this is great and they have a song called uh keeping I think it's just called head above water that I always like kind of reference whenever it's like when money's tight you know and you're just like okay I'm gonna go get pasta from the store and we're going to have pasta and garlic for dinner. They just always go, keeping my head above water, trying hard not to drown. Yeah, it's a good song. But then, yeah, everybody thinks that I'm just saying that because he's in, you know, in the industry. But no, no I don't the record. And Pretty Boy Floyd is great. And it's kind of funny. So this is what uh, Josh Berwinger from the anniversary and I bond over a lot. And I keep trying to get him to watch Peacemaker because if you watch that show, it's yes. all like I knew every and it had fucking Hanoi Rocks in it, which is one of my all time favorite bands. Yes. And I was, that's like obscure, even for kind of glam 80s glam heads, you know, because they're, they're another. That's the thing, like glam metal, quote unquote. Well, wow, we're not talking about the book at all, huh? Um, well, we are talking about the book because it is on the first page of the book. And we have talked about how there is volume two. So to recap, uh, this is all book all the time. This one's that. all about glam metal. And then the next book's all about uh, Weezer, apparently. Uh, about how you blew them off the stage on that Yahoo sponsor tour that I saw That's, at Roseland in New York those City. Are, those are your words, not mine. <laughs> well uh, i did not dispute them dispute you so well the opening chapter talks about being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and or as wilford brimley calls it diabetes betus. yeah the betus and a friend of mine growing up who went to diabetes camp 
talked about how there was a lot of promotional materials related to Brett Michaels as at his was there for you as well. I was aware of it, but I was always kind of like, I thought it was corny. I mean, I thought, I mean, I didn't have anything against poison or Brett Michaels, but I thought that like all the diabetes, like it's all like this sort of like toxic positivity shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You do anything you set your mind to, you're just like everybody else, right, Matt? Yeah. And it's just kind of like, and then on the one hand, like that's great. But on the other hand, it's kind of like, you got to at least acknowledge that it kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, if you're just like, no, everything's fine. It's like, no, it's not fine. Like shit's still fucked, but like, you're not dying, but it's still a pain in the ass. And so like, yeah, I was, a, Brett Michaels was the only like type one diabetic celebrity that I was aware of. And then it became a thing where like, you know, me being in a band and being diabetic that people would always bring him up. And I'm like, I don't think we're the same, <laughs> you know, like, but he wears leather pants. I I don't. Yet. Uh, one day for your future shed tours. Yeah, I, you know, I'm pushing 50. I'm sure I'd look good in a pair of leather pants. Uh, Ario Speedwagon does. So you never know. And it's, it's great to see not just hair metal, but you talk about a lot of the early concerts that you went to, like Lollapalooza and seeing the Smashing Pumpkins, Pearl Jam, Chili Peppers tour. Mm -hmm. That's early in the book as well. And I say that because the first time I heard the Get Up Kids, aside from, you know, Four Minute Mile and all that, was the Cure cover. So I think the average person would, who is a diehard fan of you and the New Amsterdam's and all that would go, yeah, I mean, he grew up on Mineral and he grew up on Rights of no, Spring. No, not at all. But the reality is you were kind of the alternative MTV kid. Well, I mean, that was, you know, uh, it was it was like I got into metal and then from metal i got into punk rock and then you know early 90s alternative was sort of like still underground mm -hmm. just barely you know and then it was and then it was like mainstream but not like stadium mainstream it was like uh you know i mean that that uh that chili peppers smashing pumpkins pearl jam tour was in the same venue that we played with with Weezer on that on that tour. Did you blow them off the stage that night, or is that just New York City? Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not at liberty to discuss such things. Um, but it, the uh, so it's it's it was kind of like underground big. You know what I mean? Like kind of like. Uh, it wasn't like super like mainstream, you know, like if it, if that tour was a, those three bands wouldn't go on tour together because it would be three stadium headliners, but it's like, yes. it would be in, you know, a football arena or something like that, you know, or a football stadium arena. Um, so it was, it was sort of like, you know, I mean, but we didn't have the internet. So it was sort of like you learned about stuff from either MTV or magazines and then your friends, and I didn't have a lot of friends who were into that kind of stuff until later when I started playing in bands. And then I found like the replacements and the Pixies and the Cure and, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I was a big, I was really into like grunge, like, which makes sense coming from metal. And then you get into like, I mean, Alice in Chains and Soundgarden are basically metal bands. And then Nirvana is a punk band, but it's still like really, really aggressive. And then when, you know, when grunge kind of blew up, I was kind of like, that was the perfect storm of me being 16 and angry and grunge blowing up and me being like, this all sucks now. Everybody yeah. listens to this stuff. is Like I, I had Bleat the first, like one of the first uh, original copies of Bleach on vinyl and I sold it you know, like right when Nevermind blew up and it was just kind of like, well, I could have hung on to that <laughs> and made but, some money later. But Sub Pop does come up later in your book, which is <laughs> cool to see how that came full circle in a kind of way. And I love how you didn't name who I knew that you named the brother sister label that wanted to sign you that you did not sign very well. Worded well, it's kind of, it's a, I feel like there's the, my one 
thing of the book currently is it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit schizophrenic in that uh, I wanted, I didn't want to say anybody's real name at all ever in the book. I wanted it to read like a, like if it was a piece of fiction, but then mm -hmm. it was kind of advised like my bandmates and stuff, like we should probably just say their names, but then like everybody else kind of has a, a code name, but yeah, there was yeah. that. I mean, you've, I'm also trying to not like talk too much shit, <laughs> you know, because it's like it doesn't really like I don't even with Doghouse, like I don't really have a problem with them anymore. It's just sort of like at the time I was really upset yeah. about it. Yeah. And... That, so so I'm going to rudely interrupt you right there. You Go ahead. The... I'll ramble on forever if you don't stop me in the best of ways because uh you write just like you speak so in other words i read this book going that's matt's voice and that's great but with doghouse i'm sure at the time that was everything all consuming in your life this sucks we're getting ripped off and then now you go you know what learning um how much are those masters really worth in 2023 right we're doing great as a touring band we have many years ahead of us that sucked but hey uh small tiny part of my life right now uh yeah except that it's still a, we still have to deal with them oh currently like we uh like we have a working relationship with them now because they own the vinyl rights to our first two records which we need to take on tour every time because those still they're evergreen in how much they sell and uh so we have to have like a, a kind of a you know i mean we we make them money so they're willing to give us product to make them money but i don't i mean i don't even know if they're signing bands anymore but at the time it's kind of like i mean it's a lot like your relationship with your parents where like you kind of understand them a little bit more once you become a parent and i kind of understand the industry a little bit more but at you know 20 years old i was like fuck you, we're on tour, we need records, why can't we have records? And it's, you know, I, I understand it a little bit more now, but at the time it was, it was, you know, I mean, if you've ever been around a teenager, you know that like every little drama is the most important thing in the world. And yeah. you're like, all right, take a step back, man. Like it's, it'll be okay. You're still good. You know, it's good that people want these records and they can't find them. They leaves them wanting more maybe, I don't know legacy but, yeah definitely it was kind of tricky too to like kind of remember that that was the perspective i was writing the book from mm -hmm. not necessarily how i feel about it now because I, I you know you want to just be like but that's just how i felt about it then and everything's okay now like please don't you know i don't want to like fuck up our working relationship by bringing this up totally i don't think that it will but but on a more positive note, somebody who does get mentioned in the twi uh, book twice is uh, comedy legend Sinbad. <laughs> does he get mentioned twice? You mentioned the photo with Sinbad in I think Philadelphia twice. Okay, I think that's a that's a good touch. Now where I was looking to go from that was were you a big stand up guy growing up? Besides all the hair metal, uh, I didn't realize it that I how much I knew about stand-up until I started getting into it later in like in the last 10 years mm -hmm. uh, but that like I grew up on you know George Carlin and and Richard Pryor no relation and <laughs> you know uh we used to you know I mean in that kind of like the glory days of like the late 80s early 90s sort of like what's the deal with you know that kind of like yeah be every, every venue became a, a stand-up place like uh you know and and you know uh, i really like stephen wright a lot mm -hmm. and a lot of like that kind of generation um i never really got into sam kinnison are you wearing a rodney dangerfield shirt by the way i just realized i am yes yeah and, uh, <laughs> i think my wife has seen seeing the it's the eyes i can see the eyes and i'm just like oh that's gotta be and my wife has the hoodie cool that you're wearing from caddyshack <laughs> We got uh, those hoodies that you're wearing at the the Vegas Misfit show. Uh, so you saw oh, nice. the 2017 tour, I think. I got this at uh, Riot Fest. There you go. There and you we go. Were, but uh, 
So we were joking Ryan. that it's, uh, Spirit Halloween presents the Misfits. <laughs> I see what you did there. Have you ever heard the Rappin' Rodney single? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That's right around the same era as the Super Bowl shuffle and uh, the uh, the WW, well, WWF at the time uh, wrestling record. Are you talking about Pile Driver, the album? Yes. Okay, so did I just learn that Matt Pryor has great taste in hair metal, comedy, and was a WWF kid growing up? Oh, absolutely a WWF kid growing up. And I kind of, I kind of like keep tabs on it periodically. Like I, I know about the whole like CM Punk return thing that just happened. And I'm just like, and it's kind of like, it's weird because I've never met him, but like we have friends, like he's really good friends with Chad from Newfound Glory. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, I, it's just, it's weird when it's like, I, someone I don't like, I've, I've never met David Bazan, but we have a lot of the same friends and it's just kind of strange when that's a thing. And I'm so I'm like, I don't know why people dislike CM Punk so much. I kind of need to do like a refresher course. on. I think he's kind of fascinating. If I was going to do the rock equivalent, I'm going to say that CM Punk is basically the Danzig of wrestling. Where, so? uh, first of all, people always want the reunions and uh, he doesn't do a lot of interviews. So he doesn't tell his side of the story and people surmise what may have happened when they don't know the truth with all that. A okay. little social media phobic, um, damned if they do, damned if they don't do the old stuff, those kinds of things. I relate to that. Well, speaking of re relating, you know, I also, besides this book, I respect the fact of how busy you've kept over the years because, yes, we got the Get Up Kids record every couple of years, but we also got the new Amsterdam's and the terrible twos and the solo touring and all that. So, is a lot to come from you in the near future? Um, currently, what's on my plate right now is setting up these kind of like book tour shows, mm -hmm. which I'm it's I'm trying to do in like kind of non traditional sort of. I'm trying to like not just be like, oh, I'm going to go to a bar and play a book show whatever the hell that means and uh and i'm gonna kind of do that and then we're planning out the get a kids something right home about 25th anniversary tour great which will start, i believe will start in august unless something comes up between now and then and you know that's gonna go for like the next year after that um and then i don't know after that i'm i, I have some time to kind of figure out you know, I want to start right now is a busy season for me with my song shop because people order songs for Christmas, but pretty much from Christmas Day till <clears throat> the end of January, I, I don't really have much to do. So I'll probably just be writing and uh, I've got some ideas besides just the next the next uh, volume. I don't know what's, how to put that. Is it volume of the book? The books I want to the next chapter of the I don't know. The next well, Hot book. Shots, uh, the sequel to Hot Shots was Hot Shots Part Two. Part two. Yeah. So, so it, maybe that'll be, it'll be Red, Lace, Red Letter Days, duh. <laughs> Part Two. And if it could be superimposed you as the Charlie Sheen character for the cover of it, everyone True. wins, right? You know, that's, that's definitely an idea, and I'll take it into consideration. Outro cast. <laughs>